Hello everyone, this is G and I'm back with uh, another video. I wasn't planning to do a video today, but here we are. I happened to see this tweet, and well, I couldn't resist. I could not resist. Uh, so we have here from Evil Hat Productions, a black hat. Why are you gonna make black and red always the colors of evil? It's not evil. I look good in it. <laughs> But anyway, we, they uh, refer to themselves as the publishers of Fate, Monster of the Week, Blades in the Dark, and other games. Our latest release, Thirsty Sword Lesbians. Yep, you read that right. And indeed, that's what apparently this is called. I swear, I think there's a Japanese anime or two out there that more or less featured <laughs> lesbians in sword fighting. I swear, I want to say one of them was Vision of Escaflone, but I hardly remember it. But I do remember that in just in general, like the late 80s, like the mid 90s, there's this whole like, you know, fantasy thing going on. But here's the thing. This message is all the wrong things. And like many other topics that I've covered when it comes to promotion or marketing or professionalism, this is... This is a, a master class in how to not promote something. Now, first of all, to me, I don't think that promoting the work or uh, marketing it on lesbian is a smart thing, right? We should be past the age of gimmicks now, right? I understood back in the 70s when you had, you know, black exploitation films or even in the 1990s because that's the time period I grew up in, where you sort of, you know, leaned in or you marketed things on, say, you know, the fact that, oh, you know, a woman's the lead, right, or, or things like that. I understood it then. I understood it then. But we are in the year of our Lord, 2021. We should be beyond having to market things based on demographics alone. And sadly, we are not. Because to me, this title is just incredibly, uh, just, what's the word I'm looking for? Just unimaginative. But I will say that it's probably a good uh, three-word summary of the Netflix she series. That it would perfectly uh, describe. But uh, as its own title, as its own work, well, you're, you're giving all the interesting stuff away, right? Shouldn't this be stuff that you read about and learn about? from the characters, it shouldn't be something that you're told literally right up front, right? But let's get into the tweet and the image itself, right? Because while the title I find is cringy, it's, it's the actual message that is sent here that is just flat out off-putting. It says here, there's no such thing as an apolitical game. My, 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 I had no idea that, that the Soul Calibur games were political in nature, but I... This page from Thirsty Sword Lesbian sums up our stance quite nicely. Reminder, if you don't like our politics, don't buy our games. We literally don't want or need your money. The get woke, go broke mantra is pure BS. With which I say, Kelly Sue... Kelly Sue DeConnick, is that you? Did you type this, honey? Did you get into video games and now start typing this? Because this this didn't help the sales of Captain Marvel then or now. Didn't help it in 2012 and doesn't help now in 2021, right? But here's the thing. This is just immediately off-putting, right? Telling people that if you don't like our politics... You know, don't buy the game. As many people have said when other works have gone with this message, they, they simply go, okay, and they keep their money in their pocket or they spend it somewhere or somewhere else. And while Evil Hat Productions may boast about not wanting or needing the money, you would not promote this uh, game, which I presume you have to spend money on because you say you don't want or need the money, so there is... A, a monetary figure you are asking for, so you certainly uh, made this as a for-profit product. You want people to buy it, right? So telling people who might be interested in, in the work, if only 
for its very flimsy premise, as described in, in the title, you're now telling them, well, if you don't agree with us, right, then don't buy our games. Well, guess what? They'll just go to another work that features thirsty sword lesbians, like anime, <laughs> right? And then, you know, calling the, the get woke, go broke mantra pure, pure BS. Well, here's the thing. You can call it BS all you like, but it is indeed a truism, right? It's a truth. Because the majority of things that get woke do indeed go broke. Sometimes you have something like it, like the Captain Marvel film, which made over a billion dollars. Yeah. But the majority of those works flop, like Ghostbusters 2016 and Ocean's 8 and Charlie's Angels and the Birds of Prey film and the Dark Phoenix film and Terminator, Dark Fate, and many, many, many other films that have come out in the past several years that have had this faux girl power messaging that hasn't actually helped with sales because it has turned both men and women off. Uh, I even saw, I've seen floating on the net recently, a tweet from the Amazon Prime video uh, Twitter account, literally asking people, what, what, uh, uh, what series, right? What series do you want to see an all-female reboot of? And the majority of the comments have been, none, no, none, don't do it anymore. People don't like this stuff. And people don't like this type of messaging. It's offensive. It's off-putting. It pushes people away. And guess what? You're not pushing away the actual baddies that, you know, may not be interested in this because they dislike lesbians or whatnot. You're pushing away the people who might give it a chance, but not who aren't because, well, you've been mean to them and you've pissed them off. <laughs> All right, so... That's the tweet itself. Now let's look at the image here, right? It says, no fascists or bigots allowed. I always find this incredibly funny because if the person who wrote this knew anything about history, they would realize that a work like this would not even be allowed to exist in an actual fascist government. People having different opinions than you or in this case, Texas voting to cut off abortion at, at the six-week mark, is not fascism. You can disagree with it all you like. That's fine. But it's not fascism. These people who claim fascism have no idea what it actually is to live in a fascist country. But if things keep going on the way they are, they they about to find out. And they're not going to like it. And they won't even have to leave the United States to realize how bad actual fascism is. But anyway, to play Thirsty Sword Lesbians, you must, you must support racial liberation, intersectional feminism, and queer liberation. Well, I am a non-white, brown, biracial woman. I don't think I can get more racially liberal than that. <laughs> Intersectional feminism. Well, see, here we have the problem because I am not a feminist and I have strong disagreements with the tenet of feminism. So, yeah, so I guess uh, I can't play this game because, you know, I, I disagree with, with, with uh, feminism. And then queer liberation. I have no issue with queer liberation. The question is, though, uh, uh, sorry, Evil Hat and the other individuals behind this, are you for queer liberation? Because, you know, there are queer people in this large landmass called the Middle East that has a lot, of, a lot of countries in it, right? Countries like Iran and Iraq and Afghanistan, where queer individuals are not treated well. And we're not talking things like, oh, maybe they're insulted or anything like that. No, no. We are talking about places where if it is discovered that you are queer, that you will be attacked and potentially killed, or you're forced to get a sex change because your only other option is to be thrown off a rooftop. So the question is, are you going to campaign and work for queer liberation in those lands? <laughs> That's what I'm wondering. Because most of the time when you see stuff like this, 
when they talk about queer liberation, they talk about queer liberation in the first world. And by and large, not to say that there aren't still issues, because there are, there always will be. But by and large, queer people in the first world are free. They're free and they're out and they're proud and they get parades and they get a whole month to celebrate. That's not something that queer individuals say in the Middle East or in, or in certain parts of Asia, right, get to experience. So uh, I think your queer liberation is by and large a first world problem. And you don't actually want to fight for the rights of queer individuals in places that are outside the very uh, permissive Western world. <laughs> anyway, second point. Respect transgender people, non-binary people, intersex people, and women. Yeah, sure, I'll respect anybody so long as they respect me. But the moment you disrespect me, I will give it right back to you. <laughs> and the question is, when you say respect, do you mean as in showing respect? Or do you mean things like, you know, all-out wholesale acceptance, like when people say, you know, transgendered women are women. Because, you know, there are people who are going to be like, well, let's just, let's just put it like this. Transgendered women and cisgendered women have a very different starting point. And to certain peoples, a starting point makes a huge difference. Let's put it that way. Right? Respect racialized. What the hell does that even mean? Respect racialized people, respect black, indigenous, mixed race people, and other people of color. Well, let me ask you this. Do you respect white people? Because white is indeed a color. Whites, Caucasians, they do exist and they deserve respect as well. So yeah, as a mixed race individual, yes, I respect mixed race people. I also respect people in general, regardless of their ethnicity. Because I don't care. Literally nine times out of ten, it does not matter. Right? But it's funny how, how it says here, black, indigenous, and mixed race. Well, do you not respect Asian people? Why didn't you list Asian? Don't you know that we're supposed to be very pro-Asian right now? <laughs> Anti-Asian hate and all that? <laughs> I think you need to work on your racial uh, inclusion. Your diversity and inclusion needs work. <laughs> And it says here, respect sex workers. Well, here's the thing. Not everybody's going to agree that, that sex work is an appropriate uh, profession. So, you're, so you really can't demand uh, respect for that, right? There are going to be people for, for whatever their reasons are going to feel that it's a disrespectful form of work. You have to understand that. You have to respect the fact that there are going to be people who don't respect uh, sex work as a profession. Respect disabled people, of course. <laughs> Respect immigrants, of course. Respect lesbians, <laughs> well, obviously, right? And other people with queer sexualities. Sure, but are you going to respect heterosexual people or asexual people? Right? Are you going to respect them? Respect is a two-way street. Respect people experiencing poverty or homelessness. Sure, but let's be honest here. If someone's experiencing poverty or homelessness, they're probably not going to buy this game because they're not going to have the resources right, to spend on this. Because if you have to choose between a sandwich or a game, right, or part of your rent in a game, you're probably, if you're, if, if you're a reasonably intelligent person, you're going to choose the need over the want. So I highly doubt that many individuals who are on the poverty line or who are homeless are going to be purchasing this game. You are relying on people who are not on the poverty line and who are not homeless to purchase this with their discretionary funds. Respect neurodivergent people such as those on the autis t autism spectrum. Okay, that's fine. Respect fat people <laughs> and people of all body types. Does people of all body types also include people who are very muscular? or who are very fit, or who are not uh, overweight. Because yes, I agree that we should respect uh, people, but we also, as people, need to respect ourselves. And if we are in some sort of state of unhealth, of bad health, and it's something that we can correct on our own, we should probably be endeavoring to correct that on our own. 
And I speak as a fat woman actively trying to correct that on her own. <laughs> Not demand that anyone educate you about their marginalizations. Oh no, you don't have to demand that anybody educate you about their marginalizations because see, people who would buy a game like this are like those those annoying types of vegans. Not all vegans, but annoying types of vegans who just love to tell you that they're vegan. Like, you don't even have to ask a question. You don't even have to ask what they want. They'll just tell you, my name is Joan and I'm a vegan. <laughs> right? So you won't have to worry about having to ask. They'll, they'll, they'll let you know. Right? If you don't agree, fix your heart. Fix your heart. Oh, okay, here. Now we're getting with the, with the quasi-religious messaging that's even turning me off. <laughs> If you don't agree, fix your heart before sharing a table with other people. But what if you don't agree with me? What if you are turned off by me because, say, I'm a straight person, or I come to this table with a white male, right? Are you going to fix your heart? Are you going to fix your heart and learn how to get along with me? Again, two-way street. If you do agree, but you're struggling with self-loathing over, over any aspect of your identity, that's understandable. Indeed. And if you are struggling with your self-acceptance, please, you know, get help. Reach out to people that you trust. <laughs> but I don't think this, this particular video game is going to uh, help your, your internal struggles with your self-identity. We're taught to hate ourselves in so many ways. I think it depends on the situation, but that's not necessarily a wrong statement. You're not wrong. I'm not sure if you're right, but you're not wrong. Come on in and let's celebrate the existence and joy of people like us. Ah, but again, you are pushing people who are like you and people who are not like you away. And that's the problem. We keep having these barriers up. No fascists, no bigots. If you don't like our politics, don't buy our games. So you only want like-minded individuals amongst you. That's all you want. You What you are creating is an echo chamber. All you want is to hear your own beliefs, your own opinions repeated back to you. So you're not actually creating an inclusive environment. You're not creating an inclusive game, whether it's political or apolitical or not, is irrelevant. If you're going to create an echo chamber, you are by extension not being inclusive. If you're going to be tribalistic like this, you are, by definition, not inclusive. If you are pushing people away instead of drawing them in, you are not inclusive. You are, by definition, exclusive, which is, which is not always a bad thing. But in this case, it's a terrible, absolutely terrible marketing strategy. So uh, you might want to rethink this. But then again, you may not want to hear this message from a dirty half-breed like me who doesn't agree with your apolitical game. <laughs> but anyhow... That's the video. Please let me know what you think, and I will see you all, or hear you all, in the next one. Have a good day or night, and enjoy the, what, what is it, Labor Day tomorrow? Enjoy Labor Day. I shall be enjoying Labor Day by doing chores and napping. RJ says, meow. So I'll see y'all around. Bye.